Anxiety disorders are the most common mental health problem in the United States. And we're going to talk about how to get free from this disorder. Hey there, thanks for joining us. We are going to be talking about anxiety. Anxiety is something that everyone struggles with. It's just that everyone struggles with it differently. Uh, everyone copes differently. I remember when I was just a little boy and storms would roll in, I would always be afraid that a tornado was going to come. And um, so what I would do is I would run to my dad and I would say, Dad, is a tornado gonna, going to come? And he would say, probably not. And I, I think I must have missed the probably part as a kid because when he said probably not, I heard the not. And at that point then, all fear left me and I could enjoy the rain, I could enjoy the, the cool breeze, I could enjoy the thunder and the lightning with absolutely no fear that a tornado was gonna come and destroy our home or kill us or anything like that. Um, and so that's one of the ways I, I coped with that. And then as I grew up too, my dad would always um, tell me that you know I shouldn't cry about things and we know now I know now as an adult that crying is an emotion it's part of you know when you when you have emotional uh, issues going on in your life crying is not a bad thing and sometimes crying can be very helpful especially in times of grief but I have learned over the years that crying does not help fix the problem it does sometimes make us feel a little better to get some of that energy out and those kind of things um, but it doesn't necessarily fix the problem so you know, how, how do you cope with things? Well, I coped with things by n not crying, not worrying about it, or if I did worry about it, I just suppressed it and I just went on with life. But about nine years ago, uh, my nephew got sick and uh, he suddenly passed. And I actually uh, rushed to the emergency room. I was actually there uh, when he passed. And so um, it was a very traumatic experience for me. And that was my first um, opportunity to experience this thing called anxiety in a way that I had never experienced it before. The way that people talked about before when I used to just suppress it and just deal with it and tell people I hey, just cope with it, deal with it. I now experienced it at such a level in such a way that now I was starting to understand what people went through. Um, I would wake up in the morning and I would have this overwhelming fear and trembling. I mean, literally my body would tremble inside because of this fear of death. I was afraid that maybe my children were going to die now or something was going to happen to my wife or I was going to die. And so then all of a sudden it started to intensify. And if I had a pain somewhere or if, if I was exposed to something, I started to feel this overwhelming fear of death and I had no idea how to handle it. I would go to websites. I actually went and talked to a counselor for a while, um, but nothing seemed to work. I would go to bed at night and I would toss and turn and sometimes I would lay in bed and I would literally, my body inside would just tremble. I could feel my whole body trembling. And so it wasn't just at night and it wasn't just first thing in the morning. It was all day long. I had these thoughts of fear constantly. And so for the first time in my life, I actually realized what people go through when they say they have anxiety. And so um, I also realized how hard it is to try and explain it to somebody who has never experienced maybe a, a traumatic event or who has never really had anxiety in the sense that uh, those of us who have it to this degree have had it. So um, what I want to do is I want to talk about anxiety for the next several weeks. We'll talk a little bit about what it is and maybe where it comes from. Um, but really, I'd like to focus on how we get free from it because I would say it took me about eight years, which I know you say, well, I've been battling it for a while. So if you have anxiety and you just got it, um, I also know that, you know, it can be over like that, but it might take a while to get through it. Um, but you can get through it. You can get free from your anxieties. Um, you can find ways to cope um, with your anxieties. So that's what I want to talk about in the next several weeks. Um, but today specifically, specifically, I want to talk about sleep because sleep is probably one of the most important coping uh, mechanisms uh, for dealing with anxieties. So anxieties are when the mind and the emotions and part of our will constantly pushes us 
to um, think about and worry about situations. So whatever the situation might be, it might be a situation that's going on in your life and so you're constantly worried or concerned about that. It might be something that is might happen in the future and you're worried or concerned that it might happen in the future. Or it might be something that happened in the past and you're worried about the ramifications. But it's, it's just this constant worry and excessive um, thoughts on whatever it is that's going on in your life and you just can't shut it off and it brings feelings of depression or fear. Um, it's, it's endless. There's, I mean, you talk to somebody with anxiety and you might get a different idea of what it's like in their life than, and then when you talk to somebody else concerning their anxiety, you'll get a different idea. But it, it's just this constant churning of uh, fear or worry about something that's either happened or is happening or is going to happen. And so when we talk about sleep, I went to uh, sleepfoundation.org and uh, that's where I got this, I, this uh, quote that says the anxiety disorders are the most common mental health problems in the United States. And it's not getting any better. When you look at what's going on with our pandemic, um, with the coronavirus and all the stuff that's going on with that, um, and people are afraid of that, and then you've got uh, the elections that just happened and people don't know where you know, our country sits and there's so much uh, problems with that and then the disunity over things. And then you throw in, you know, your faith and your family and your own jobs and uh, job security or insecurity. I mean, it, it's endless. People are struggling with anxiety. Um, and so when they were talking about anxiety here, they said, they said that sleep is uh, one of the things that is a real problem. And here's the problem. It says here that sleep deprivation can worsen anxiety, all right? And, but, but at the same time, you need sleep, okay? So, so you need to get to sleep, but you're so worried and you toss and you turn and you can't go to sleep and you tremble and then when you get up, you feel that. And so you need sleep in order to help with your anxieties, but when you go to bed to try to sleep, you can't sleep because you're worried or you're fearful. And so that's what I wanted to tackle today because I think sleep is uh, so very important and so I wanted to talk to you about what the Lord said to me when I was battling uh, these anxieties. What I would do is I would, I started to walk through the book of Psalms because I knew David struggled with a lot of worry and anxiety, but he always put his trust in the Lord. And so I started to walk through the Psalms. I, I walked through all the scripture texts. And so I'm going to share a lot of different scripture texts with you over the next several weeks concerning anxiety because I really do want you to depend on on God and his word and his truth and his promises in order to help you get free from this because I believe that that's where I found my freedom and listen it'll take work and you will have to work at it even after you get free because the enemy will continue to come back and try to put fear in your life things and situations around you will come back and try to put worry and fear back into your life but you have to be um, diligent to stay free and you can stay free uh, in in God's uh, victory that he gives you so I was going through the Psalms and I read in Psalm chapter 3 and Psalm chapter 4 um, two areas there where David talked about his, his sleep habit and how he could sleep and not worry about anything. He could just lay down and go to sleep and get a good night's sleep because he knew that the Lord was in control. And so the first text I have for you is in Psalm chapter 3. So Psalm chapter 3 um, in verse 5, it says, I lay down and slept, and I awoke, for the Lord sustains me. Now, I want to talk about that just for a second, but just think about that. I lay down and slept, I awoke, for the Lord sustains me. Now, you get laid down at bed at night, and if you struggle with anxieties, you lay there and worry. You can't turn your mind off. You toss and you turn. Well, one of the things that I would encourage you to do is pick up your Bible and start to meditate on this text. Psalm chapter 3, verse 5. I lay down and I slept. And then I awoke the next morning. You see, he's, he's talking about the fact that he went to bed last night and he got up this morning. So he's awake now. And God preserved him. He... Uh, God was watching over him all night long. And so he recognized that the reason he woke up the next morning was because of God. Not because he did something to protect himself against the enemy. Not because uh, he kept himself breathing through the night. 
not because he had figured out and solved the problems that were uh, going on the day before or the problems that might present him the next day. No, he just went to sleep. He, he laid down and he went to sleep and he got up the next morning. Why? Because the Lord is the one that sustained him through the night. And so when you think about just that verse, you start to meditate on that and you start to say to yourself, you know what? When I wake up tomorrow morning, and you know what? You may not wake up, but you're not going to know it if you don't. But when I wake up tomorrow, tomorrow morning, the reason I'll wake up tomorrow morning is because God sustains me. And if God's sustaining me all through the night, I don't need to worry about what happened yesterday or what's going to happen tomorrow. I'll deal with it then. You can do that. Now, now look at what he says here in uh, the next verse. This is verse uh, 6. He says, I will not be afraid of 10,000s of people. I will not. So really, 10,000s of people, it's just talking about many people. Um, so whether it's people coming against you as an army or whether it's something that you're dealing with in a relationship, those people coming against you, or maybe it's even some kind of a spiritual attack that's coming against you. He says, I will not be afraid of many people coming against me who have set, look at, who have set themselves against me round about. He's talking about them even encircling him as if they're going to attack him. So he's got a real problem here. The problem is, is that he's got, um, he's got people, armies that are surrounding him and going to attack him. And he says, you know what? I woke this morning. I laid down last night and I slept. And I woke this morning because the Lord sustained me. He took care of me. Even though there's many people around me that want to attack me, the Lord sustained me all night long. And so he said, I can just go to sleep and not worry about that. And if you start to meditate on this, and I would suggest you read the entire psalm, Psalm chapter 3, before you go to bed at night. And just think through the fact that God sustains you and that you can trust him to sustain you. Now, I understand you could get fearful and say, well, I know people that went to bed and never woke up. I, I understand that. But as a believer in Jesus, you know, or you should know, and you need to know right now, that if, if you don't wake up the next morning, you will be with the Father in heaven and you will be in eternity and you will have eternal life in him and nothing will get any better than that. And so you don't have to worry. And if you, you say, well, yeah, I understand that, Brian, but if I lay down and I don't worry and think about something that's going on tomorrow, well, what if you don't? What if, what if you just go to sleep and you don't worry about it? Isn't it it's going to be there tomorrow either way, right, when you wake up? So just understand that God will sustain you through the night. As a matter of fact, this is what I do some nights. I ask God, God, would you just speak to me and speak your wisdom and your truth into my life while I sleep? And then I just trust that as I sleep, that God's going to speak to me and speak wisdom in my life. And when I wake up tomorrow, that issue will still be there, but God's going to give me wisdom to know how to deal with it. And so that, that text alone should encourage us to just lay down and go to sleep. And you say, well, Brian, um, I can't. When I lay down, my body just trembles or my mind just can't stop racing. All right, well, there's some other things that you can do. Uh, number one is this. Try to stay away from any kind of media at least an hour before you go to bed at night. That's like normal routine for people. If they want to get better sleep, um, you look at all the sleep professionals, people that know about sleep patterns, you need to make sure that you aren't on social media and aren't in some kind of media before you go to sleep, at least an hour, maybe even two hours before you go to sleep. You also want to try to find things that are going to calm you down. So if that's like taking a nice hot shower, a nice hot bath or whatever. Uh, but the, the best thing, listen, the best thing is, is to read and let God's word give you peace. And then once he has given you the peace, then you can just slip off to sleep knowing that when you wake up the next morning, the reason you woke up is because he sustained you. Now, I want to take you to one more scripture text, and that is Psalm chapter 4. And Psalm chapter 4, um, let's see, starting in verse uh, 6, says this, Many are saying, who will show us any good? Now, that's the world around us. The world around us is always trying to figure out if there's any good. And people with anxieties really struggle whether or not things are going to work out for their good. Um, they're always concerned about that. And so that's part of the concern with anxieties. Is this thing going to work itself out, you know, and it's, it's going to um, be good for me or for the people around me and that kind of stuff. 
So he says, many are saying, who will show us any good? Now right there, I want you to stop. And as you're reading through Psalm 4, you got to remember that there is one who is good, and that's God. And God is the one who will show you good. As you trust in him, you put your faith in him day after day after day, he will show you good. Matter of fact, um, the, the book of Romans, uh, chapter 8, verse 28, says that uh, he works everything together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purposes. So you can put your, your trust in that. So he says, um, many are saying, who will show us any good? And then this is next. Lift up the light of your countenance upon us, O Lord. So you, you want someone to show you good? Then you, you make this your prayer at night before you go to bed. Lord, lift up the light of your face upon me. Turn your face towards me and let your light shine on me. And when, when you ask God to do that, he will. He will turn his face to you and he will let his, sh uh, his light shine upon you. And when he does that, you will find blessing and goodness um, in your life. That's, that's the prayer. Our prayer should be, Lord, lift up the light of your countenance. Turn your face to me. When God turns his face to us, that's presence. That's his presence with us. He acknowledges us. And he is looking upon us. And as he's looking upon us, we can be assured that he's going to show us good. Now, when he does that, when he lifts up his countenance upon us, the light of his countenance, when he turns his face to us, all right, this is what the psalmist said happens. It's more than when there's grain and new wine that abounds. Now, when grain and new wine abounds, that's good. That's the harvest. And so we know we have an abundance in that. And we know we're going to have something to drink and, and we're going to have food. And so our hearts are glad because the harvest has come in and we know that we're going to be taken care of. Well, when God shines, when God shines the light of his countenance upon us, when you cry out for God to do that and he shines that, it'll be better than if you know that you're supplied for all your physical needs are supplied for. Because now your spiritual needs are being supplied by God's grace and his peace. Now look at the last part of this real quick with me, okay? He says, when that all takes place, when I've asked God for his countenance, the light of his countenance to shine down on me, his face to be torn, turned towards me, all right? And then he's the one who shows me good. And it's better than any physical provision that I could have. Then it is in peace that I will both lie down and sleep. Do you notice that? I will lie down I won't toss and turn. My mind doesn't have to go to what happened yesterday or what's going to happen um, tomorrow. I don't have to be afraid of anything because I know that even if, even if there are many around me wanting to attack me, I don't have to be afraid. Why? Because the Lord sustains me. So it's in peace that I will both lie down and I will sleep. So I won't just lie in my bed and toss and turn all night. No, I will lie down and I will sleep. And sleep is one of the best remedies for anxiety, you know. If, if you don't get enough sleep, anxieties are worse, all right. And if you lay down to try to sleep and you got anxiety, you can't sleep. But with God shining his countenance on you, turning his face towards you, you can be assured that he's going to show you good even through the night. He's going to sustain you. And then in peace, you can just lay down and sleep. Now look at, look at why he says he can lay down and sleep here. This is the last part of this verse. For you alone, O Lord, make me to dwell in safety. For you alone, O Lord, make me to dwell in safety. Now, at the end of the day, all of us have to get a better handle on believing and trusting that God cares about your situation and that he wants to not only sustain you, but he, he definitely he definitely wants to make you to dwell in safety. Now, I understand. Brian, look at what's happened in my life. I, I know the feeling. Trust me. I had a nephew that uh, I loved dearly. And he was gone, taken from me. Taken from his three little daughters and his wife and uh, his sisters and his mom. And so it was the most traumatic thing that I've gone through, I guess, um, I could say. And it brought anxiety into my life. And I get all that. But coming back to God and his word, 
God is a God who even in the midst of our struggles, and listen, we're all going to have struggles. Jesus said that. If you live in this world, you're going to have trouble. Things are going to happen. But he has overcome those things. And so even in your tragedies, do you, so, so I, I look back at this. I'm like, okay, I had this tragedy happen in my life, but, but God is still good in that. Because God has still provided for my nephew and his eternal life. And he still can provide for me and he's still providing for my family. And so I watch that over time and I can start to lay down in peace. I don't have to toss and turn. And I can get a good night's sleep every night now. I mean, I'm not saying every night I sleep perfectly, but I don't worry anymore. Why? Because I've learned that when I go to bed at night, I, I need sleep, number one. But when I go to bed at night, I can just trust that God will take care of me. He'll sustain me all night through. And when I wake up the next morning, if I wake up, but when I wake up the next morning, then God will help me to deal with that kind of stuff, uh, whatever I need to. But I, I need sleep. I want to get some good sleep. And so he helps me to sleep. Now, I understand some of you out there are saying, but Brian, you just don't understand. I can't turn my mind off. I can't stop the trembling. I totally get it. There was one night, and I'll tell you this, I have the, the most beautiful wife not just physically, but um, spiritually. Um, and so one night I was trembling. I mean, literally, I could not sleep. I was trembling inside. It was probably like 12 o'clock in the morning. I had gone to bed maybe 1030, and I just laid there and trembled for an hour and a half. And I didn't want to wake her up, but finally I was like, I don't know what to do because I literally felt like I might be going insane. And so I, I retched over, and I kind of woke her up uh, lightly, and I told her what was going on inside of me. And so she sat up in bed. And she let me lay my head on her lap and she ran her hands through my hair and she prayed for me until probably about 1 or 1.30 that morning until I finally fell asleep. And I slept uh, well until it was time to get up. But she did that for me. And you, might, you might say, well, I don't have a wife like that or I don't have a husband like that. Or, but you have a father like that and you can trust in him and listen. Even though she did that for me that night, my fears and my anxieties didn't just go away that night. But the more I meditated and the more I soaked and the more I, I put these kind of scripture texts into my heart and my mind. Like now, I might not quote these word for word, but I know that I can lay down in peace. And I can sleep. Why? Because I know that the Lord causes me to dwell in safety. I know I can lay down and sleep. And then I'll wake up the next morning. Why? Because I know the Lord sustains me. And I also know this, that if he doesn't, if he chooses not to, or if a tragedy is going to come into my life tomorrow, I know he'll be there to walk me through it. And I can trust him. And that's what I want you to do. I want you to start soaking in the word and get a good night's sleep. And so my prayer tonight is, or for you tonight, is that you sleep well. Matter of fact, oftentimes when I go to bed at night, I always ask God to help my boys and April and me to sleep well. Because it's important that we get a good night's sleep. But more than that, it's important because as you sleep, all right, you are building faith and trust because you're just resting in God. And as you rest in God, you wake up the next morning and you start to get this idea that, oh man, God is watching over me. He does sustain me. He's good. Now, I, I get it. I, again, I'll, just real quick, again, someone out there is saying, but you don't know how badly I struggle. I know. I know I don't know how bad you struggle. But I know how bad I struggled. And it was in meditating on the Word through, in the evenings. And I'm going to tell you something here that many people may totally disagree with. But if you're going to get through this anxiety, you've got to put your whole life into the person of Jesus. And you've got to get into his word and you've got to let his word become a part of who you are. And as you do that, God's spirit, the light of his countenance will turn upon you. And as the light of his countenance turns upon you, he will show you good. And he will show you how to lay down in peace and sleep, not toss and turn, but sleep. And when you wake up the next morning, you'll understand that he alone causes you to dwell in safety. Well, listen, 
Um, we're going to close it out here today. I hope that this has helped you, and I hope that you get a great night's sleep, not just tonight, but I hope you continue to get great night's sleep because you're focusing on God's Word and trusting that He is good to you and that He will cause you to dwell in safety and that He will sustain you no matter what comes your way. So join us here next time, um, and we're going to be talking more about anxiety next time, and so we'll see you then.